Pong Camp here. Today we're going to make a one player Pong. So go ahead and open up Beauty Hub. We hit new. Let's go to 2D. I say one player Pong. Let's go ahead and get the scene set up. Let's go to our main camera. We got Orthographic 5. That's fine. Let's go ahead and set the background color to black or maybe maybe a gray control s to save go over here and create a new object and create empty it's gonna be paddle rotator set this to zero 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 under here we're gonna create it's gonna be sprite and don't want none of that let's go ahead and open Photoshop we're gonna make itself our pixel so we're gonna say new say two by two okay zoom in it's already white so we're gonna file save for web okay let's go find our project go into our assets a new folder sprites open this up I call this pixel sprite and save we go back into unity open our sprites change this to paddle then we're gonna drag or actually we'll just go here open pixel sprite zoom in we're going to grab this. That yeah, looks about right. Get camera to see our player boundaries. Gizmos. There we go. So now we can see our boundaries save let's go ahead and make a new empty game object we're gonna call this screen boundaries reset this to zero <clears throat> so in here we're gonna create a new sprite and use the same pixel Move this over here. Negative nine looks. Or maybe it's eight. Point five. No. Anyways, zoom in. Grab a rec tool. Make it so we can. So we can see the edge. Use an alt. Use an alt to move it around so we get a uniform. Uniform line. This is going to be left wall, let's duplicate it, call this right wall, so it's at negative 8.87, so we'll just make this positive 8.87. Grab this one, duplicate it, call this top wall, bring this X to zero, bring it up to about five, rotate this 90 degrees. 
grab our tool again, our rec tool. Zoom in. Grab this edge, hold all. Actually, I did not hold all. So grab this edge, then hold all. Ugh. Grab this edge, then hold all. There we go. So now, now we have our top, our top wall. Grab this, duplicate it. We'll call this the bottom wall. And this is going to be negative 5. Alright. So now we have our screen boundaries. We go ahead and just uh, actually nah, we don't need a clodder on that because the ball should never make it out that far. Okay, on our paddle we got we need to have our paddle offset of our paddle rotator because our paddle rotator is going to spin. So we bring this down about right there. Paddle rotator. If we spin the pivot. So yeah, now we got, got the start of our game. Actually, let's bring it down a little farther. We probably scale it down a little bit. I'll save. Now we have the start of our level. Alright, now let's go ahead and make this thing rotate. So we'll add a component. Say player movement. Okay. Give that a second. We're going to open this up in Visual Studio. It's going to be pretty simple. So we'll go to our void. Give us some room to work. For say if input dot get key down or actually we're just gonna say get key get key and then we're gonna have key code dot a this we'll change this to s say rotate to the right and we're gonna say let's go up here and make a speed variable or say public float speed to rotate and we're going to initialize that to zero. Go down here and we say transform dot rotate. Then we're gonna say vector three dot forward. So that's the axis that we're gonna rotate on. And we're gonna say speed to rotate. Copy this in. And on this one, we're going to say speed to rotate negative. Hit file save. Let's go back into Unity. So speed to rotate, let's go ahead and say 5 for starters. And hit play. little bit. So say one. Still a little fast. So say point three. All right. So now we have our player movement. But accidentally, let's see. Accidentally put S when I meant to put D. And then we'll also make this where you can use the arrow keys. So we'll just go ahead and copy this. Input. We'll say 
four. And this is the left, so this will be left arrow. And we'll go down here and say or. <clears throat> this is the right, so it's going to be the right arrow. We'll hit file save. Go test this out real quick. So there's our A and D keys. There's our left and right keys. All right, what's next? This is gonna need, let's go to our paddle. It's gonna need a collider. So we're gonna say a box collider 2D. All right, so let's make the ball. So we're gonna open Photoshop again. Say new, this is gonna be 10 by 10. Zoom in, copy this so we can get rid of the old one. Make this gray because that's the color of our background. Add a new layer on top of it. This is going to be a circle. It doesn't look completely right. Let's go here and make it from the corner to the corner. Move it over. Give us a white. Take the background off. File save for web. Save. It's gonna be the ball sprite. Go back into Unity. Open sprites. So what we got here we can say we want a new sprite. Call this the ball. Reset everything. Drag our ball sprite in here. And ball's a little small, so scale it up. Oh, that looks bad, don't it? Let's just Delete our ball sprite. Delete. Go back into Photoshop. New. We'll make this 100 by 100. We'll do the same thing. Drag our background. Delete the old one. Just turn this one off. We can kind of see what we're doing. Go here. Make sure it's kind of centered. Choose white. Oops. Make a new layer. Hit fill it in. File save for web. Save. Ball sprite. So now we should go back. We got a little bigger, a little bigger ball to play with. So now we can just scale it down instead of having to scale it up. And it should keep. Should keep the color. But it doesn't look like it's completely centered. Let's say 0.25. Copy it. Paste it. And Z can be 1 because it doesn't matter. So. Let's actually make a container for our ball. So we'll say ball. Say ball. We're gonna say reset to zero zero zero, and then this will be our ball graphics GFX. Now we can drag this into here, and we got zero zero zero, and our ball is at zero zero zero. This needs a collider. So on our ball object, we're gonna say circle collider two D. A radius, we're gonna make it 0.12. Let's say 0.115. Yeah. So now we see that our ball is a little off. So we go to our ball graphics. 
the y negative point zero zero one. Let's go back in our ball and go down a little farther. So zero point zero zero two. Let's check it. And that looks a little better. So now we can go back into our ball. Add component. Now we're gonna want a rigid body 2D. <clears throat> the mass is fine, this gravity scale is gonna end up being zero. But for test, let's just play now. Yeah. Let's actually zoom out so we can see it happening. Turn the gizmos off. Play. Boop. Yeah. Okay. So we want our gravity scale to be zero. Our angular drag to be zero. Our mass can be one. Simulated that's all fine. Let's add us some material. So we're here, create. And then we're going to say physics material. Physics material 2D. So we'll change this to ball. We're going to make the bounciest to 1. Make the friction to 0. And <clears throat> if we hit play now, nothing's going to happen. That's true. So let's give our ball a starting velocity. So we'll go to ball, add component, say ball, enter. And does that sometimes. Let's go back, open our ball again. And on the start, we want to give our ball an open velocity. Alright, so we're in our, in our ball class here. And what we want it to do is at the start, we want it to, let's say we want to rotate to a random direction direction and then we want it to we want it to apply force in that direction so let's say at the start start we want it to First off, we need our rigid body. So, we will say, we're going to have a rigid body 2D. We're just going to call it RB. And then we're going to have a integer called the random, wait, random rotation. All right. And let's say we have a float called speed. So at the start, we're going to say random rotation equals random dot range. And for an integer, this is going to be, it's going to be, Oh, random that range. Okay. So I think an integer is inclusive exclusive. So we'll go from zero to three sixty one. Yeah. And that'll give us our random rotation. So then we'll just say transform dot rotation equals no Let's say transform dot rotate and then we'll rotate along the transform dot forward 
by the random rotation. I'll save. Let's just go test this out. So go back in Unity, click our ball. So we got our gizmos, we see. Let's hit play. Alright, that's random. Do it again. Random, one more time. Random. Okay, so that's working. So, let's go and apply for, oh, before I forget, let's go back into our player movement. And here on our rotations, we need to multiply this times time dot delta time. Before I forget to do that, so we'll do it on this one. We'll go down here and we'll do it on that one. I'll save. We may need to tweak the speed a little bit. Okay, so let's go back to our ball. And we rotated our random direction. Now we need to apply force in that direction. So that would just be the forward. So we're going to say RB. Well, let's grab our RB first. That would help. So RB equals get component rigid body 2D. And I don't know why you wanted to get in there. So now we we'll say RB dot mm, velocity equals transform dot forward. Or actually, would it be forward or up? be up transform dot up times move speed or actually times speed I'll save and we'll initiate the speed to one I'll save go here play yes I play again yes but it needs to be a little faster I'd say by like not twice as fast we'll say I have as fast so we'll go 1.5 I'll save. Let's go back. Let's maximize it. Let's see if we can actually do something with this. Okay. Yeah, see we need to change our our paddle speeds. So speed rotate would be one. Too slow. Say ten. Play. Still too slow. Let's do thirty. Play. Still too slow. Let's do a hundred. Crank it up. Okay. Oh, that's because our, okay, I was wondering why that happened. That's because our ball doesn't actually have our physics material on it yet. So let's go grab our ball and we're going to put this on our rigid body. Let's put it on here too to be safe. I really don't know the difference. And our paddle also get the ball so let's play now and see what happens so we kind of got a game ball might be going a little too slow let's make it two and our 
Paddles are definitely going a little too slow. Still. Our paddles crank the speed up. To 200. And we'll hit play. Whoa. Suck. Try that again. Okay, let's go. We're gonna make our ball just a little smaller. So, we're gonna go 0.75 and 0.75. Yeah, I like that a little better. So let's add some score. Yeah, we're gonna add a score. So let's go. We're gonna create UI Text Mesh Pro. Let's import this guy. And now we have our Text Mesh Pro. Where is he? Let's zoom in. Whoa. Right, we're gonna change this to score text. And turn gizmos on so we see what's going on. Let's make him let's make him centered and centered. And we're gonna hold shift and alt. Get him in the middle of the screen. down uh, right here and then we'll change our font size so it'll fit inside there and change the opacity down and this is going to be two numbers so let's go ahead and change this to zero zero and we can I'm holding the alt to do this by the way and I think he needs to be bold and I think he needs to be a little bigger yeah and the opacity might need to go down just a little bit more okay so now I have our score text and what can keep track of our score text? I guess I guess we can have a let's create an empty we're gonna call this the game manager. Go into the game manager. Add a component called game manager. I'll open it back up so it's our game manager we need a let's say public integer called score then we're also gonna have go up here and use using text mesh pro and we're gonna have a public text mesh pro game object so text mesh this guy right here we'll call this score text then since this is a small game and our update we're just gonna have score text dot text equals score dot to string bracket bracket yeah yeah we're gonna start a score at zero 
I'll save. And... Hit play now. It should set this to zero. And it doesn't, well, because we don't have a reference to it yet. So, here we're going to drag in our score text into our game manager. Play, now it should go zero. Zero. Well, that wasn't cool. We also, I think also I'm going to take my paddle and reduce its size just a little bit. And, and to get a feel of the play size, let's take our ball sprite, actually, screen boundary is at F so we can zoom out, I'm going to go here, we're going to create a new, create a new sprite. And we're going to drag the ball, let's go to our sprites, and drag our ball sprite back in here. And we're going to zoom this guy up. Change him to like a blackish gray. The opacity down a bit. Clearly that doesn't look centered, so... Cause it's not. We'll do this right here. And then now let's hit play, see what it looks like. Zooming back out. Put him right on the edge of the paddle. No. I missed him. So we need to we need our ball to wait a second before it starts. So we can go ball open our ball script on the start can do all of this but we want this to wait so we're gonna use coroutine so we'll say private I numerator say wait wait to start And then we'll say yield return new wait for seconds and we're gonna wait for one and a half seconds and then we're gonna take our ball start it so here we need to call it Say start coroutine and then wait. Wait to start. Okay, so that should give us a little time to see the ball. Yeah. Okay, making progress. So now we want our score text to count. So in our ball, select 
Honestly, let's make let's make our game manager. We're gonna say this is static. Our score is static, so we should be able to get it from everywhere. Go to our ball. Say game manager dot score. Okay. So yeah, we can access that here. So here we're gonna need a check for if it hits the paddles. So we're gonna say down here. Tag, we're gonna add a tag, add this as paddle, save. We'll have to go back to it, select it. Cool, cool. <laughs> because it's on collision, enter 2D. So, if collision dot game object dot compare tag is paddle then we'll say game manager dot score plus plus I'll save go back play the test Yes, so now we have our score counting. Alright, our score can be bigger too. Let's go to our score. Text. Zoom in. him make him about that big so now let's test it out okay so now we need a way to restart the game if the ball misses the paddle so, first off, let me go in here and take out these debugs. Just like that. Don't need to start. So, to easily do this, Screen boundaries. Okay, so we're going to say make let's make a new empty. Reset him. Call him this the restart boundaries. So add a box clutter 2d say offset over here the offset would be negative 5 size will be one's fine I'll say 10 on that so we're gonna add another one it's gonna be the opposite of this one so we're gonna say 5 and the same Y All right, so we're gonna add another one this one's gonna be yeah there he is this one's gonna 
B. Level 5. <clears throat> and again on the X. Add one more. This one's going to be positive 5 on the Y. And 10 on the X. And we could probably make these a little thicker. So this would be size that so we can make this two. No. Two. Yeah. We'll make this one two as well. All right, all right, all right. So there's our colliders. Let's go ahead and we're gonna tag these. We're gonna make a new tag. We'll call this the restart. Go to restart boundaries, tag this as restart. So we'll go back into our ball. Then on our ball, we're going to say, we're just copy this collision, since it's checking. We're going to say, if the collision is restart, and then we'll go back up here, we're going to say, using uh, unity engine dot scene management. And then we'll go... get our scene first so we'll say scene and we'll call this call this current scene scene current scene equals scene manager dot get active scene and then we'll say scene manager dot load scene and we'll call this current scene dot build index file save let me see if this works so play And it works. Let's make sure if we add a number on here. Let's see if it restarts to zero. It does not. Okay. So for that, that will go to our game manager. And we'll say. on enable score equals zero all right there we go okay uh, scale the size up just a little bit but the next two things I want to do before we finish is I want to add sound and I want to add a little difficulty curve so like the more play or the more points you get the faster the ball will go. So let's start with the easy thing first and that would be the sound it's on the ball itself. Let's go to the ball, We're gonna add a component add audio source cool 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 we're gonna untick play on awake and then let's find us a sound so I have let's see let's see 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 so where's audio right in front of me sound effects 
We got 8-bit. We got... Mm -hmm. Pick up sound like... him into the sound lower it volume just a little bit so now if we go into the ball script go up here and we're gonna need to get the sound audio source so we'll say some audio source called yes and down here Say AS equals get component audio source. Save. And then on click and enter. The paddle. We want to play a source dot play. One shot. Oh, to do that, well, let's just do it that way. So up here, we're gonna change, we'll say we have an audio clip called Impact. Down here, we'll say play one shot, Impact. Just like that. So we'll go back into our project, and we're gonna set or rip this guy out. Change him to none. Then we'll go to our ball. Evidently we made it private. Let's make this public. Save. Go back. Pull him in here. Now. But it is a little too loud. A little too annoying there, so. Open our audio source back up. We're gonna bring it down. Save. That's good enough for me. Okay, now let's do the, uh, let's get it to speed up a little bit. So. Say. say since we have a score here and it's static we'll just check it and so here we can say in our update say, <clears throat> say if Game manager dot score is greater than ten. The end. So let's leave it there. So it's greater than. So we'll say or B dot velocity plus equals new vector 2 and then it's gonna be 0 on the X speed on the Y and then we don't want that running constantly so we'll make a boolean 
actually we'll make three of them. We're gonna say bull has passed ten. Bull has passed twenty. And bull has passed thirty. I don't think you're gonna get past thirty. So that should be good. So if you're over ten and has passed ten, then you do this, and then we'll say has passed ten equals false. Or wait, if you're not past ten, we'll say has passed ten equals true. All right. So then, do this <clears throat> two more times. So if you're over 20, has passed 20, has passed 20 equals true. If you're over this, if you're over 30, has passed 30, has passed 30 equals true. So now, that should be fine. So that'll give us three levels to play with. And I think that's it. Let's go here. We'll go to save. And then we'll play our game. See how far we can make it. Okay. So yeah, if that's a little too hard, we could uh, we could go in here and change it so we can say you know, float speed equals 1.5 maybe or yeah 1.5 and this could be not speed but increased speed and then we can just say this can be increased speed and then you could have three different speeds you could make it go faster and faster if you wanted but just like that we have a pong game a one player pong game if you enjoyed the video I hope you like subscribe check out future videos spawn camp and I'll see y'all guys later